I'm so gonna have to fix my tripod soon because it's driving me crazy. Hi guys. All right. Can I get YouTube to open up? Hi Steven. All right, let me just get this up here. Turn that sound off. Oh, I thought I just cleaned them. All right. Hi, Steven. Hi, Ange. Hi, Bosede. And Steph and Marette. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, Keith. Just talking to you. <laughs> Oh, I just put my finger on it after I did that. Hi, Chris. Okay. So, a couple things. First of all, hi, Kay. Uh, hi, Lillian and Life of Bex and Alchemy Seal and Steph. And Maddie just posted something in the group. Hi, Jazz. And Family Wizard. Hello, hello, hello. So before I start Tarot Talk, there's a couple things that I wanted to bring up. Um, first of all, you guys all did great today with uh, your thrifty finds. That was a great day for thrifting, huh? I should have probably gone to the thrift store. Instead, I went to the witch store, the metaphysical shop, which was a bad idea because there's so so much in it. Um, and poor Maddie, <laughs> he um, had messaged me a couple times when I was in the shop. Hi, Leland. Little Dandelion and Kay and Spiritual Splendor. I'm trying to keep up here. Um, and so what I ended up doing was photobombing Maddie with all these pictures of all the stuff that's in my metaphysical shop because I just had something in my hand thinking, do not lose this, and now it's gone. Uh, don't you hate when that happens? Hi, Talia. And Lisa. Um, so poor Maddie had to deal with, like, I think I sent him 20 pictures of my metaphysical shop because I was like, oh, I don't know what to get. I hate When you go in there and you have this limited budget, and I'm like, okay, I'm not spending over this amount of money. I got a certain amount of money for Christmas. I'm like, this is, I'm going to spend this and this only. And, and plus, I knew I had a lot of points on uh, our metaphysical shop has a point system. So every time you go in, you, you know, you get certain points and you get extra points on certain days and all that kind of stuff. And um, I knew I had quite a lot of points on there, so I knew I was going to get money off. So, but I was trying not to think about it. I'm like, look, I want to spend this amount of money and that's it. And I'm, I'm going to pretend I don't even have the points. So then I have like a little money for gas and stuff like that for the rest of the week. I know which shops give me trouble. Just bought a crystal ne necklace for $250. Woo! Woo! I love points. Yeah, me too. I just totally dropped something. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, so I, I was like, I don't know what to get because they, our metaphysical shop is awesome. It really is. I'll have to post some pictures. Um, the pictures that I sent to Maddie, I'll, I'll post in our Facebook group after. Um, but he was like, oh my gosh, stop posting me all these pictures. Because first I was like, okay, so I'm standing, he was messaging me about his altars and stuff. And I'm like, well, I am standing in front of the Oracle section of my metaphysical shop. So I'm, I, take a picture. I'm like, here you go. And he's like, oh my gosh, is that tarot? I'm like, that's just oracles. Then I turned around, took a picture of the tarot section. I'm like, yep, here we go. And then here's books. And then here's crystals. And then there's the goddess statues. And then there's herbs and this and that. I mean, they have everything in there. So he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he's like, We're, I'm going to have to start saving right now. So when I come in May, you have like this warehouse metaphysical shop. I thought, yeah, you know, that's true. I'm pretty lucky. We Our metaphysical shop is pretty awesome. It's huge. And it has pretty much everything you would want in there in some form or another, which is also very dangerous. <laughs> I've been warned about witchy shops, talking, taking advantage of people ever since I decided to follow this path. Oh, I have to say, our metaphysical shop is pretty good. Um, like our goddess statues and stuff, for the most part, they're usually about 45 50 bucks. 
which I is really good. Like it's pretty hard to get that kind of a deal. And um, the owner, like I can talk to the owner and say to her, hey, I saw this on Amazon for cheaper. And hi, um, somewhere in time, Caroline. Um, and, sh and I know where you can get this for cheaper. And um, she will seek it out. Um, and she's the place, like when I want a tarot deck and I hear that it is just going out of print and it's all of a sudden people are jacking the prices up because they know it's the last of, I will go to her shop because if she has it in stock, she doesn't jack the prices up because it's the last one and it'll be gone. I can buy it for 25 bucks or whatever. And that's how I got the Jeparitzi tarot was um, when I heard it was going out of print, I went to her shop and she still had it. And I, I only paid, you know, 27, I think, dollars for it. So it was really nice. My local witchy shops are amazing. They have sales every first weekend. Yep. Punch cards for books and decks. Absolutely. Mine is too. So really, really nice. I love it. So, of course, I'm in there and I'm taking all these pictures. And Maddie's like, stop sending me pictures. So, I have to say, I did really, really good. Um, first of all, I so I'm addicted to this incense and this incense alone. Which is this incense. Um, someone, I'm trying to remember who, someone included this in something that they sent me. Oh my God. And I, I just love it so much that now this is kind of all I've been burning for a while. So I adore this <laughs> incense and I was running out. I think I was on my last one. It is so, it's like sweet and spiritual. I don't know how to describe it. They say that it is, it smells like, um, smells just like the temples in India. I don't know if that's true. But I know I adore this stuff. It's just, uh, it's just the perfect incense. Perfect. I love it. Bewitching, it's your favorite too. Yay! <laughs> yes, gives me chills. Absolutely. Every time I light it, I'm like, ah, yes. Okay, now I'm feeling centered and spiritual. And so I was running out. So I got sticks and cones because I had to have them. Because <laughs> I was starting to run out. And I thought, when I run out, what am I going to burn? I mean... Now, mind you, I have a huge box of incense. Um, so I have tons. I have dragon's blood. I love dragon's blood. I have patchouli. I love patchouli. I, but I thought, oh, no. I will have nothing because this is what I want. <laughs> and I won't have anything at all. Um, so I did get, I got a tarot deck, which I won't go through tonight anyways. Um, <laughs> I do, too. I have so much incense. But the, um, the New Vision Tarot. So I had been looking at uh, the Before Tarot and the After Tarot. And I still might get them. Uh, I would love to find the incense they burn in the Jade Buddha Temple in Shanghai, China. That place made me so very serene and just felt like I belonged there. The incense was lovely. Ha, ah, right? And it smells to me, I'm a very, um, um, what's the word? I'm a very smell person, which is the sensory. <laughs> I'm totally losing my mind. Auditory, visual, olfactory. I'm a very olfactory person. Thank you. Yes, 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 yes. I said it first, but thank you. <laughs> That's just because I'm trying to test my brain. Um. I'm a very olfactory person, so it, that will immediately take me back. Hi, Jackie. Anyway, so New Vision Tarot, I've been looking at the before, I've been looking at the after, um, because I think it's great when you're studying. And so I may start to pull these out fairly soon here when we're studying, because uh, the New Vision shows um, the other side of the picture. So let's say, like you can see on the front here, the Fool, we all know what the Fool card looks like. Hold on, let me grab it without burning myself. It would be great. So this is what the Fool card looks like. And the New Vision Tarot looks at it. So you're looking at him from behind and seeing what he sees and what 
is is he looking at and what's behind him and that kind of thing. So, um, and then like here's the magician, which this is the back of the deck. Here's the magician and that is what you see behind him. So he has a little monkey behind him. You can see he's looking at all the people. Hi, Dave. Hi, Maddie. Welcome. I've been looking for Goddess Statue of Best Step for a long time. The good shops are out of town, so I guess I'll have to look online. Okay, as a matter of fact, I wonder if I took a picture of it. I picked one up because I've been looking for a Sekhmet. I love Sekhmet. And um, I picked one up that I thought maybe, even though it didn't really, but it, it turned out it was Best Step, and I had not seen one that looked like her. So... That was really interesting to me. It keeps buffering for you. I'm sorry, honey. Um, so I like this deck because it completes the story for you and it helps you to look at the story differently. Um, and the before tarot and the after tarot are kind of along the same lines. And I decided to get this one first. The before tarot is what happens to the full character right before the shot was, you know, before the, the camera flashed. And the after is right after the camera flashed. If the shot had kept going, what would happen right after? And I think it's good when you're doing a tarot study to kind of look at behind what is this character looking at or what's behind the character and look at what would happen right before and look at what would happen right after. And that helps us with the entire picture of the card. So the story that Tarot does, that helps with that storytelling. When you're doing a reading, that is going to help with the storytelling. Okay. Uh, oh, my God. I'm spray painting another black mirror, and I thought it was done drying. I got black paint all over my fingers. Oh, I'm sorry, Maddie. Yeah, Sekhmet and Besta are awesome. I love them both. Absolutely. Uh, best incense ever is artisan handmade incense, dragon's blood, and Palo Santo. I wonder why, Dave. Is that what you just got from October? <laughs> That's okay, Haxon. Don't worry about it, sweetie. As an aspiring artist, I always have paint or ink on my hands. That's right. That's uh, the measure of a good artist. Oh, you think your fever is back? Oh, Haxon. See, you've been wearing yourself out. It's time. You have to get some rest, honey. I find vice versa tarot confusing. Yeah, and and I was going to say that. Vice versa. Now, I have heard that out of all of these, out of uh, the new vision and before and after and then vice versa. I've heard vice versa is the worst one as far as it confuses people. So, I stayed away from that one. I may still get the before and the after to kind of go along with studying in depth maybe once we get through the first study. But um, I really liked the idea of completing the story somehow, or at least enriching your story of the card. I really like it. So I did get that one. Um, I'm not going to show that one today because it's uh, an older deck and lots of people have seen it. Yes, ibuprofen, ibuprofen, ibuprofen. I am going to try to quickly show No Time to Rest, Ain't No Way I'm Missing This Live. Oh, well, rest while you're watching, Hexen. You can lay down and cast it to the TV even. I'm not sure how I feel about after, before, or vice versa. To me, those portions of the story change from reading to reading. Absolutely. And Sherry Bug, once you know the cards really well, then you may not need something like that. But I find when I'm teaching that it's really good for students and and for me too. I'm I always I want to always try to broaden my my view of that. Um, but I find that people are able to, um, incorporate the story. You know how when you're reading a card, you're trying to put the story together. So you have these cards laid out and you're like, okay, what is the story here? Sometimes it's helpful to picture the story from a different angle. And so I really like, I liked when I'm teaching to use that. That's okay, Hoxton. You don't have to be chatty, my darling. You relax. Uh, Hexen, ice on the inside of your wrists. There you go.
Okay, now Dave is saying, hello, James. Did I miss? Who's James? James must be somebody that does not have James in their name, and I don't know yet. Jennifer, I have the before and after and vice versa and use them for clarity. Vice versa is not the opposite. Is not the opposite of card meanings. Okay, I got you. <gasps> Lillian! I... Wow! <laughs> Family wizard is James. Okay, now I know. Hi, Tracy. How are you? Lillian, thank you so much. I, um... Wow! <laughs> I think that's the most anybody's ever given me on there. That's so sweet. Thank you. I I never I, thank you. I'm a, I'm trying in the new year to be um I don't know. I don't know what the word is to be um better about accepting. So thank you. I really appreciate it a lot. A lot more than I can even tell you. Hello, Whispers of Three. Okay, so the Oracle deck that I get, got today, that's okay, I'm just starting out, Wisdom, is uh, a new deck by um, Blue Angel. It's the Her Hero's Journey Dream Oracle. Now, I'll tell you, I, Happy New Year, everyone, right? Yay. I am a Carl Jung freak. Carl Jung, Carl Jung however you would like to pronounce it, um, which means I also love Joseph Campbell. Um, Joseph Campbell wrote books about the, I still can't believe that. Thank you so much, Lillian. That's just awesome. Um, wrote books uh, about the hero's journey. He wrote the original book that he wrote was The Hero's Journey. And so he talks about how in every movie, in every story in our lives, the archetypes that that Young uh, talked about um, go through a storyline. And very often the hero's journey is the story that we want our lives to go through. And that a lot of movies, most movies, most books, that kind of thing, you can put their story into the hero's journey. As a matter of fact, the reason I even know about Carl Young and Joseph Campbell and all that kind of stuff is because I'm a Star Wars freak. I'm sure you know that. Um, because I'm a Star Wars freak, <laughs> the creator of Star Wars took A Hero's Journey, written by Joseph Campbell, and literally took the hero's journey and inserted characters and created a story around Joseph Campbell's book, A Hero's Journey. And then talks about it when he talks about how he created you know, the Star Wars obsession that he specifically did it with Joseph Campbell. Wish it could be more. Oh, please, honey. I, I'm, I am so appreciative of all that you guys do for me. Reminds me to show you my Star Wars tattoo. Ah! You have a Star Wars tattoo? I'm so jealous. I kind of want one too, I have to say. Kind of do. Um, hello. Oh, hello, Catherine. How are you, sweetheart? Well, I know him because of the book Synchronicity and the Self-Psychology of the Tao. Absolutely. And um, so Carl Jung talks. I love Carl Jung for shadow work. A lot of he does talk a, a ton about archetypes, which I love. But he is like the master of shadow work. He is the creator of how to deal with your shadow. So I love Carl Jung for that. But so here we are. This is this deck is in my local metaphysical shop. And I'm like, oh, the hero's journey. What is anything that has to do with the hero's journey? I, of course, have to look at because I had two actual full-size Stormtrooper costumes. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm such a geek. I can't help it. But I would absolutely adore to have a Star Wars. Yeah, okay. Anyways, hero's journey. He came up with the concept of shadow. Exactly. So. I have to be honest and say, I did not know. Hi, Heidi, how are you? I did not know anything about this deck before I saw the title of it was Hero's Journey. And I was like, oh, all right. I think I like this deck. And I kind of looked at the back and I totally like it. He dresses as a stormtrooper every year for Halloween. I love it. My dad is a huge Star Wars nerd. Yes, I am too. Can't help it. I just am. Um, 
And if any of you are on my Facebook page, you will see that I am. And one of the things that we did, I think it was Christmas Eve night that my son was home and my, or two of my sons were home and we all had this huge discussion about how Jar Jar Binks is actually uh, Darth Plagueis and what Star Wars, be quiet, Maddie. I can't even, no, that's not acceptable. <laughs> I just read about him from psychology in general. I sat in my college library reading some of his more metaphysical stuff. Love, 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 love. Um, <laughs> I would love to sit and talk with Yoda, right? Absolutely. He would be awesome. Joking. I knew you were joking because I would not be your friend otherwise. No, I'm kidding. I would totally be your friend, but I wouldn't make you watch it probably. So, oh, well. <laughs> All right. So here we go. Yes, well, Jar Jar is actually a Sith Lord, like the Sith Lord. But because everybody hated him, they wouldn't do that storyline. But anyways, I like Star Trek too. I am I am both. I am because, um, well, I don't know. My father was both, so I kind of grew up to be both. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I have, <laughs> hold on. Ah, uh, love Jar Jar. He is my favorite. Like Star Wars, I'm more of a Star Trek. Jennifer, I have the original Star Wars fig all figures from the 70s in a case. That's awesome, Caroline. I have to say my brother, I'm really jealous. Actually, my mother has uh, the C-3PO and the Darth Vader case and has a whole bunch of them in there that were my brothers. And she keeps saying she's going to send them back to him. But eventually, I'm just going to go to her house and steal them because I like them better. And I don't know how the heck that just happened. My freaking thing jumped right right over. You posted a pic in the group. Thank you, Steph. Okay. Um, I looked refreshed. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I don't feel, I have to be honest now. I don't feel very refreshed because now I'm going to really show my geekdom. Um, I, I was up until 2.30 in the morning last night. Doctor Who, love Doctor Who. Uh, I was up till 2.30 in the morning last night because, TARDIS, yay, uh, because I um, started a new Dragon Age Inquisition character, and I should have known better because when I start, I haven't finished Inquisition yet because it's such a massive game that I don't want to get to the end because I think I have heard that Solus is actually the bad guy at the end, but it's totally killing me, so I just, I can't give my get myself to finish it because I just don't want to see that. That will break my heart. So anyway, I started a new character, but when you start a new character, at least when I start a new character, I kind of need like 10 hours to really get the character into a progression that I like. And then, then I can go to bed. So it was like two 30 in the morning and I was like, Oh my God, I have to work today, which I did work today. <laughs> So I finally shut the TV off and was like, okay, go to bed. I don't care where you are. I haven't touched it today because, yes, character creation OCD. Thank you. I'm so glad someone understands. Yay. When my sister was mean to me when we were little, I would take her Star Wars figures and cut their fingers off. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, yes. Yes. I'm a Whovian too. Yes. Uh-huh. Absolutely. I'm I'm total geekdom. I'm I'm all there. Firefly, love Firefly, Dollhouse. I'm a Buffy fan for life. I, I adore Buffy and Angel and Dollhouse and Firefly and which means Joss Whedon. I love Joss Whedon. Um Harry Potter, huge Harry Potter fan. I read all the books. I've seen all the movies. I I I can't even I just I'm a total geek. So I'm with y'all. Nothing I can do. That's just me. Yep. Buffy Angel Firefly. Yay. Dollhouse. You've never heard of Dollhouse? It was Joss Whedon. And there's a lot of Joss Whedon people in Dollhouse. Um, and yes. Oh, my God. I bawled so much. I, I can't even. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Farscape. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, there was um, Amy Akers is in... Dollhouse, um, uh, true, you know, True Calling, what's her name? Um, she's in Dollhouse. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of these, 
Yes, Eliza Dusku. Thank you. She's in Dollhouse. So, okay, I'll try to keep off the nerd thing. Let's go back to Terror and Oracle. Okay. All of you praise the gods and goddesses of old. Found my lost doodad in the trash. How did my brain go save this? And my body said, nah, trash. <laughs> oh, no, Jess, really? Uh, okay, big question. Who plays D&D? &D? Okay, I have to say, I did when I was young. I played D&D, &D, but I do not have the time to invest in character creations anymore. My sons do D&D. &D. They do D&D, &D, like, a lot and very, very into it and I buy them the books and stuff but I, I can't do it anymore I just don't have that Dragon Age Inquisition hmm this I, I the Xbox one over there oh my god it's like my favorite game now I have to say I'm a massive I'm very into story so I do not my kids make fun of me because I will run around and and gather all the herbs I can like everybody else is fighting and I'm picking up herbs and I love the story part. And I'm good at fighting, but I just don't really care. So I always put it on casual because I don't want the fighting part to be hard. I like the story part. <laughs> so um, I love um, Mass Effect. I played Mass Effect. I fa played Fable back in the day, all the way up to the new Fable. Um, Dragon Age. Uh, Skyrim. I played Skyrim when Skyrim came out. Um I adore Dragon Age, can't do it now. I have children and it will rub my life, right? I know. I kind of, I like crafting more than the actual fighting. Me too. Yay, crafting. I love upgrading my weapons. <laughs> and, okay. <sighs> okay. Uh, lots of moral di dilemmas and it hurts. Okay. I'll try to get back on track now for the non-nerds out there. My fiance and I got an Oculus Rift for you all. Yay! So I've been playing Skyrim VR. Yay! Yes, yes, yes. Mass Effect, Fable. I like Sky Skyrim. Oblivion was better. Skyrim, I, I, I like. But Skyrim was, like, too pointless. It was too hard to even figure out what the fuck the quests were because you were getting killed by crabs in the beginning so much. It was ridiculous. So, anyways. Okay. I'm going to try to get us back on tarot track here. <sighs> okay. Hero's Journey. I can't video game too many buttons these days. <laughs> All right. Hero's Journey. So here we go. This is the Hero's Journey Oracle. Um, The book. Who cares, really? Do any of you? All right. You might read the book, but I don't. Uh, But so it says ordinary. Although this one, because of what it is, it, um, you know, it could be good. In mythical stories, Jonah being swallowed by the whale, Psyche. Oh, Joseph Campbell. It does say something about Joseph Cam Campbell, so that's good. Um, talks about the cards, has spreads, and then, you know, goes through the cards. So that's good. Let's get to the cards. I will do the nerd live later then. <laughs> okay. All right. If you go to Amazon, type in Will the Air Tapestry, it will come up from... Oh, yeah, the tapestry behind me? Absolutely. Absolutely. They did find it. So, I'm really excited about these cards because I love Joseph Campbell and I love Carl Jung. The Call, Honor the Whisper of Your Soul. All right. These are really pretty. I'm really glad I got these. Ugh. The quest, plunge boldly into life. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. The reward, celebrate your magnificence. Now these just came out. Uh, I think the end of December or they're coming out the beginning of January. I can't remember. I had two decks in my hand. One was, had just come out and one was coming out. We all need to be able to squirrel out once a week, right? They almost look like soul cards. Yes, I was thinking that, Hexen. Yes. The reward, celebrate your magnificence. Oh, I love that. 
The Return, Own Your Mastery. Whew. All right, see, now this is what happens to me. As soon as I start doing any kind of energy work, I was fine two seconds ago. And you see my cheeks now? I have an open window in front of me. Oh my God, I think I'm going to start gaming in and maybe do some lives about games. Ah! One with the sun, be the light. Oh, that's gorgeous. I love the mountains. Oh, these are going to be really good. There's no place like home. Nestle into the sweetness. Oh, love that. Time for a quantum leap. Prepare for a makeover. Oh, beautiful. These are really nice. Dream Sanctuary, attend to the simple things, right? I'm so glad I got this deck. The other deck looked very similar to this. The one, the other one I had in my hand was uh, something light. <laughs> this is called the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle. It's a blue angel deck. You are invited. Suit up, show up, and open up. Oh. When you are done showing the cards, can you pick one and read what the book says? Yes, absolutely, Ange. Great idea. For sure. Oh, I love this one. Attune to the call. T tune in and turn on. Hello, Anna. How are you? Oh, I love this. Breadcrumbs of bliss. Heed your pleasure principle. Really pretty cards. They do remind me of the soul cards. Except they give you a direction instead of not too expensive on Amazon. Yay! Say yes to your higher calling. Be a human exclamation mark. Ah, oh, these are great. Oh, these are going to be great affirmation cards. They're going to be great when you're doing a tarot reading to kind of clarify what, what um, part of life are you talking about. Can see a lot of uses for these divine discernment step back to find clarity yes this is a big oracle card size reminds me of it's as big as uh like lucy cavendish decks sacred feminine deck um or what's it called sacred sacred wisdom fuck <laughs> sacred rebels oracle it's, it's as big as that. Where you are is where it's at. Stay still until you are divinely moved. Also, Amazon is, is an enabler. Jen shows me. I order it and it's here in two days, right? I love this. Sometimes you just have to stay still and wait. Yes. Really nice. Build in breaks. Saunter slowly. Love it. Somewhere in time is Caroline, Steph. I'm getting there, guys. I'll get y'all eventually, I promise. I need someone to change my Amazon and PayPal password and not tell me, right? Oh, build in breaks. You hear this, Hexen? This one is for you tonight, my love. Build in breaks. Sixteen. You're in great company. Pull back to propel forward. Ugh. 
Look at that. It's almost an embrace of yourself. Oh, so pretty. Love it. <sighs> okay. That's not bad. 35 minutes. There was only one so far. I'll live. All right. 10,000 angels. Lean on your circle of supernatural support. <laughs> Love that return smirk. I know. Everybody always waits for it. I love that. Lean on your circle of supernatural support. I'm not a big angel person. Um, only because I call them my guardians. But I'm sure they are the same. And so to feel like the supernatural circle of support, I love that. Tarot stock pitch forces shortest to Jen's internet company. Yay! Yes, absolutely. 25 more rows and I will be done with this lap blanket. Yay, Jackie! Yes, great for meditation, great for journaling. Knights of the Round Table, let their love lift you higher. Look at uh, a whole circle, like a, the whole council, like my council, my Scully council. The whole council. Angels, guardians, same thing to me. Absolutely. Jen made me do it as a sentence my husband is accustomed to hearing. <laughs> oh, gorgeous. Oh, I'm loving these. North Star, flip your inner light switch. That is a gorgeous card. That reminds me of the canyon or the... Um, the solstice buildings that we were talking about, that they made these slits in the walls so that they would shine the sunlight through just at solstice and it would, you know, illuminate certain things on the back walls. And that's what that reminds me of. North Star, flip your inner light switch. I may get this deck for myself tonight. I need a little pick-me-up and this deck is gorgeous. Yep, Jen made me buy the new elements, Tarot. Yay! Love the new elements. It's like a doorway. Yes. I think these are the most beautiful cards I've ever seen, right? What would you, what would your higher self do? You are divinatory. You are divinity in blue jeans. <gasps> Love it. Oh, I'm so liking these cards. Divinity in blue jeans. That is a thing. And if it isn't, it's gonna be. Hi, Pamela. Divinity in blue jeans. I love that. I should get kicked back from Amazon, right? I agree. <laughs> For the second run of Spirit Keepers, I know it. We are looking at the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle from Blue Angel. Just came out. Um, and... Divinity in pajama shorts, exactly the same. I totally love it. And Hero's Journey, hello. I love Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung, and this very much feels like that kind of energy. I don't know how I feel. The picks are gorge, but I feel like I'd rely too much on the meanings written in the cards. They distract from the artwork. So, Maddie, you have been using your soul cards, which is great. I love the soul cards for me readings. I do not use the soul cards for other people readings, though, because unless I know how their spiritual being is, some people don't know what to do without any words on it or any direction. So I found if I lay a soul card down, hi, Monica, um, that's a lot of uh, querents are like, oh, they don't, it's like they're, they're afraid to say it wrong. You know what I mean? They don't want to show you their soul. And the soul cards are awesome for me readings. But I, I don't use them for other people because it's like they don't want to give that much. Unless you know them really super well, they don't want to give you their soul. You know what I mean? But I love the soul cards for that for me. 
Uh, plant seeds of intention. Go, grow, glow. Ah, uh, that's gorgeous. She is the flower growing. Love it. Soul cards make me spill my guts. Absolutely. Me too. Picked my dedication date January 6th. Yay! All right, Pamela. Good for you. Congratulations. You just ordered the deck gay stuff. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that's awesome, Pamela. I use the soul cards for day-to-day -day readings for my messages and keep in a glass jar. Yeah, keep in a glass on top of it. Awesome. Now, where is Brad? <laughs> Another Jen made me do it. Yay! For oh, This is awesome. For this, you were born. Foster your intention for incarnating in this dimension. Look at her magic flowing right out of her hands. Foster your intention for this dimension. Mm. That is, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm liking these. Trip the light fantastic. Dance with the universe. Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. These are stunning. The unknown is your friend. Learn in or lean in to embrace what's next. Lean in. Oh, how many times have I heard that? Lean in. Embrace what you don't know. Treat it as if you had chosen it. Eckhart says... Great personal soul cards. Yes, like Margaret Peterson tarot deck too. I can only use for me. Yes, absolutely. Um, Eckhart Tolle says all the time, treat this moment. When something bad happens in your life, treat it as if you had chosen it. That's what present moment thinking is, is saying, you know what? I can't control this moment. I, this is all I'm worried about. And I can't control this moment. I'm just going to treat it as if I had chosen it. So I, why would I choose this? Hmm, it must be there's a lesson here. I need to learn something. I need to think about something differently. Lean in. I like the script probably because I'm just now learning tarot. Perfect. One of my New Year's resolutions is to start making my spirituality a bigger part of my life. I feel like these cards will help. It will, Steph. It will. It will, it will, it will. Hi, Barefoot Taurus. Who is... Damn it. Uh, I swear I know your name. Raquel. Damn it, Maddie. Give me a second. <laughs> is totally not on Amazon right now ordering this step. Nope, not me. <laughs> Whale of a time. Your charge is to enlarge. <laughs> it's all right, Maddie. I'll get it. Oh, that's gorgeous. <laughs> ah, it's all right. It's all right. I could have sat there for 10 minutes and not remembered Maddie, but I just like to think that eventually it would have come to me in like another two seconds. <laughs> me time. Enjoy your own company. Yes. Me time. And hello, she's naked. I love naked me time. I keep refreshing the tracking page for my deck. <laughs> I have a cheat sheet of everyone's names, but I've now memorized almost everyone, right? And you might be a visual person, which, so writing it would help you. It wouldn't do anything for me. I have to say it. And once I say it and remember it, then I'm usually okay. Love me time. Especially naked me time. 27. Flip it upside down. Question your beliefs. Uh-oh. Serana, have you said your name before? I'm not going to get that one. I, It's not one that I focused on. So tell me it now and I will focus on it. Next time I probably won't get it either. But then if you say it, then I will get it the next time. <laughs> I have Alice in Wonderland Tarot coming. Tracking says tomorrow. Woo! Oh, 
Oh, did I say it? Flip it upside down. Question your beliefs. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's like the galaxy. Hey, Jen, in case you can't remember my name, it's Ashley. Thanks, Ash. I appreciate it. <laughs> Steph, you must be Regina. <laughs> Don't confuse me, people. <laughs> that would probably work on me. I would start calling Steph Regina. <laughs> Ocean of emotion. Find a safe place to express your true feelings. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Yay, great barefoot. I just smiled when they called your name. Oh, that's pretty. That That's like you're in the ocean looking up at the blue sky, don't you think? May. I did comment on your Facebook thing about the Wheel of the Year and the profile pic is the same. May. May. Okay. Serena is May. Serena. May I remember that? Or may I not remember that? <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> I turned Matt into May. All right, see, now that I said that, I may remember that. No, not may. Oh, shoot. It turned, what? All right, now you're confusing me, Serena. Uh, thank you, Jackie. <laughs> Serena is Matt. Oh, shit. Oh, damn it. Are you trying to really fuck with my mind now? <laughs> now I'm going to start calling you May. <laughs> never a crowd on the leading edge honor those who honor you oh yeah whoops how did I turn that okay this is the card that's on the front of the box. We will get this right someday. Yes. Good thing we call me Maddie, right? I know. And poor Maddie. Remember the first time I called you Maddie and you were like, uh, nobody calls me Maddie and now everybody calls you Maddie. Guess whose fault that is? This one right here. Dream redirection. Redream this situation. Re ah, dream redirection. I love this. You can redirect your dreams. LOL, now I love it that everyone calls me Maddie. See? Maddie is a term of endearment. That's right. You're like my son. I call you Maddie. I call my son PJ. PJ, that's not his name. I call my son Joey. I call him Boo. Or Boo Boo. That's not his name. Um, shoot, I missed it. I swear this month's PMS and Hot Flashes combo, I'm about to kick butt and take names. Being a woman sometimes sucks. Oh, I hear you. I call her Pep, so she will be ever, forever be Pep for me. Dream Redirection. Now, I love this card, you guys. This card says you can take this dream that you had that's starting to fall apart and redirect it. It doesn't mean the dream is over. It means maybe things did not go exactly the way our human brains made it be. But it doesn't mean that dream is dead. We just have to redirect it. So I love that. Love it. An ally in disguise. Discover the hard to find blessing. And this is a gorgeous card. And see how fuzzy it is? Boy, it's hard to see that ally in disguise. Sometimes you really have to look for the good. So for this card, this reminds me of Mr. Rogers. Yes, that Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers used to say, when you find yourself in a tragic situation, like 9-11, uh, like uh, an explosion, like a fire, look for the people who are there to help. There's always someone there doing good. Even though this horrible tragic thing is going on, there's always look for the people who are there to help. And that will give you hope. Focus on those people. Sometimes it's hard to find the ally in disguise.
Make the grade with flying colors. Remember, you signed up for this. Love it. You signed up for this life. When we went to the Summerland, we all went, hmm, what do we want to learn this go round? Act as if you had chosen it. Love it. Love this deck. Discover your superpower. Access 100% of your mojo. You've got it in you. Sometimes you got to dig down deep. But you have it. Jennifer, I call all my children by nicknames. When I call them by their formal names, they know I mean business, right? I know. My, my poor son, PJ, used to have um, his friends would call and ask for Peter, and I would hand my husband the phone. So Because I don't even, Peter's not him. That's not, he's not Peter, but okay, that's his name technically. But I don't know him by Peter. Peter is my husband. <laughs> he's PJ. There is no Peter. I don't have a son named Peter. <laughs> I hope next time I choose to learn what it's like to live as a millionaire. <laughs> Snapping the air somewhere in time. Steph changed her name to Regina George, so I changed my name to Regina George. No changing your names. I was in your life today. I love the things you share. From fuel, no, from fear to fuel, stand still and own your power. From fear to fuel, own your power. These cards are fucking awesome. Love these cards. Love them. <gasps> All right, I love this card. X marks the spot. See the love in disguise. Look at that. Yes, yes, yes. We all need to learn how to do that. I hope I can find a new fitting name for me. I choose, chose Cameron, but I don't like it anymore. The struggles of being trans. Little dandelion, whatever you choose, you choose a different one every day. I just choose one that feels comfortable for the situation you're in. And then when you don't like it, you don't have to keep it. It's okay. Someday you'll find one that that feels like it's this is really me, right? And Oh, the thin, thin veil. Let go and let glow. You're welcome, sweetheart. That's right. I personally like little dandelion. <laughs> That's right. Me too. You'll find one that suits you. Just perfect. Until you do. Stop and take in the view. Take stock of the treasures you've earned. I'm trans too and picking my name was, damn it. And of course my internet is screwing up so I don't have my chat. There it is, finally. Maybe, so my chat isn't coming up. Taking that view. Gorgeous. You've won the lottery. Make room for wonderment. Which really talks about being grateful for everything that's around you, right? How awesome is that? Sometimes it's really nice to have friends from all over the world. I have to tell you, I have friends from um, India. I have friends from 
Um, the Philippines, I have friends from Haiti. I have friends from nations that um, are much more grateful than we as Americans are. And I like to talk to them sometimes just to say, okay, what's, help me out here because I'm feeling like I don't have a lot or like I, I just feel sometimes like I'm running on a wheel. And it's really nice to go, okay, show me your normal. And it's nothing to say, see, it, you know, you're worse off than me. It, but it is to say, wow, you know what? Stop your bitching, Jen. I, I got my life a lot more than I think I do sometimes. Right. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Still, my internet is not going to give me my comments, apparently. Oh, wait, maybe, finally. How much good can you handle? Explore the upward spiral of grace. There we go. Caroline, I posted the link to our Facebook group. We'd love to have you in there. Yes, Carolina. Now you have a friend in Mexico. Yay! Welcome, Carolina. I'm new to live, but I've seen your videos. Oh, well, welcome. Absolutely. Please do join the Facebook group. We have lots of fun in there, and we are really getting to know each other as family, so... One of the best things I ever did was being in the Peace Corps, learning how lucky we are to live in the U.S., how so many people have almost nothing. Absolutely. And I just spelled it different and trusted that it was right. Perfect, right? How much good can you handle? It's, and that is great sometimes, and that's why, um, like with the, the money that was given today, I'm trying really hard to... Whew, sometimes we want to go, oh, you don't have to give that much that, because it's a it's a weird situation, isn't it, to accept things? Um, even though I know that I am am busting my butt for you guys, and I'm, you know, I just it's hard to accept reward, I think. And so sometimes it's nice to learn how to receive. We all know how to give. All of us are very generous people. Sometimes we have to learn how to receive and say, you know what? Instead of, oh, you didn't have to. Oh, I don't even know. You don't have to. So I've really been trying the last year to learn how to receive graciously, which sometimes just means saying, oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. End of story. Because it's so hard not to follow that with, oh, you didn't have to do that. And and it's, it's really hard. It's hard to do that. And sometimes you can't take compliments. See? Me too. I know I have a hard time. Sometimes that, um, that acceptance of the receiving... It's just what you need, and all of a sudden, all this receiving comes in. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, I picked it because at the time, my favorite characters were Jack from Nightmare Before Christmas and Jack from Jack Frost. Awesome. Perfect. Sometimes you wonder what it would be like to live closer to nature than we do. Absolutely. Receiving is so hard. I was thinking of using Dandelion's name, but I feel like people won't take me seriously. It's up to you, honey. I, I know people named Bambi, and I don't think they're stupid. I don't, you know, I'm, I know what you mean. There can be, like, a, something attached to that. But if they meet you and they realize that that's just you, I hated the name Frank, when I or when I named my first son Frank, I hated that name. Um, it was my husband's grandfather. So I did it out of respect for him. And now I don't think of the name Frank. That's just who he is. He's just Frankie. That is who he is. 
It's not a name so much as that's just him. Same thing with how we look on a day-to-day. -day. When someone compliments you, just say thank you. That's right. Getting rid of the programmed guilt, replacing it with gratitude. That's right. And that, that law of attraction thing, if you are grateful, if you have gratitude, that's what you're attracting. That's right. At the end of the day, it's your name for you and no one else. That's right. That's right. And testify. That is right. Stand up and be recognized. Behold, you are the inspiration you've been looking for. Look at that, little data lion. Here we are talking. Stand up and be recognized. That's specifically for you right there. Apropos uh, timing right there. Stand up and be recognized. Full support, always. That's right. You hold the key to an awakened life. Set yourself free. Oh, hold on, this card is stuck. I also hated the name Marcus for my son. However, it was the name my fiance wanted and the baby wanted it too. He insisted. There you go. You hold the key to an awakened life. Set yourself free. You hold the key to an awakened life. Set yourself free. You can have it anytime you want. Just open the door. Love it. In the castle of dreams, become altered by the color of your dreams. Oh, that's gorgeous. Group hug. Love you all. And it's been over an hour, so guess what? We're not going to get to tarot talk because I'm so damn slow at this. <laughs> The magic zone, the exhilaration of discombobulation. <gasps> yes, how big is this deck? I know, right? It has 52 cards. The magic zone, the exhilaration of discombobulation. I love that card. It reminds me a little bit of my favorite all-time painting, which is um, Van Gogh's. Starry night. Right? Gorgeous moon. It kind of reflects off of her shirt. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I do too. That's my favorite painting, Starry Night. Eyes on the prize. Trust the guidance of your North Star. So pretty. My whole bedroom is Starry Night decor. Hey, I have a, a uh, Starry Night umbrella. So it's black on the outside, you know, and when you open it, Starry Night inside. Love it. Love it. All right. This was me the other night. Here we go. Divine drunkenness. <laughs> Surrender to your spiritual revelry. Cheesecake and tarot. Yay! Right? The Golden Girls sitting around the kitchen table. My goal is to be Sophia when I'm older. Just say anything and everything that's on my mind, right? I have to say, if any of you have seen, um, oh my goodness, now I'm going to lose it. Grace and the Netflix show with... Um, Ah, oh, Frankie. Yes, Grace and Frankie. My goal is to be Frankie. I, I, I am her already and I'm not even 70 yet, but you know, that I'm, that's who I'm going to be because I'm already her. So, and I'm just going to stay the same. <laughs> Did you see that they have golden girl chia pets? That's hilarious. And Bob Ross, really? Ah, oh, that's hilarious. 
Be reborn daily. Let go of the past and breathe in your new incarnation daily. Love it. Let go of yesterday. Who do I want to be today? What do I want to be today? Must watch. Bao Bali. I'll have to look that up. Celebrate the sacred gap. Give thanks for buffer time. Oh, look at that. Oh, how pretty is that? Gorgeous. It is very insightful, very spiritual. Love that it keeps bringing you back to today, to this present moment. Boy, Eckhart would be uh, very proud. Weird is the new cool. Boldly express your uniqueness. Yes. Abso-freaking-lutely. I knew letting my freak flag fly would eventually kick in and it would be cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Weird is the new cool. I'm going to hang that one up in my office. <laughs> Afterglow. Land gracefully. Love it. When you have that spiritual high and you're like, yes, everything's great and everything is working out great. Remember to enjoy the afterglow part of it and land gracefully. You know that it's going to come back down a little. Expect it. Embrace it. Land gracefully. Yes, for the freak flag, fly it high and proud. Heck yeah. That's right. We're down to three left. Three cards left. Fifty. Become the elixir. Let your glow do the heavy lifting. Yes. Become the elixir. Look at that. She is the moon. She is the moon. Oh, I adore these cards. For real. They are awesome. Be the bridge. Expand your consciousness to behold both worlds. That's gorgeous, too. Be the bridge. So, what the heck? Joey and I were just talking about this. About um, understanding that there's other dimensions and yourself in the other dimension crossing over. And that's, I talk about, that's what I think of uh, deja vu is I feel like another dimension is crossing paths and is doing the same thing at the same time as you are, and that's why you feel like you've seen it before. She's like the wind in the tree, dirty dancing flashback. I was just going to say that I totally started singing that. She's like the wind in the tree. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I feel about ghosts. Perfect. Last one, a splendid torch. Blaze brightly. Blaze. Blaze, blaze, blaze. Absolutely. Great deck. Really great deck. Oh, look at her. She's beautiful. So, absolutely. So glad I got this deck. Hero's Journey. Dream Oracle. Great deck. I am going to uh, postpone our tarot talk because it's been over an hour already. This reminds me of that Firebird song you shared. Right? I am the Firebird. I am his daughter. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely. That's okay. Hi, Rosie. Um, okay. So I am uh, not going to be on tomorrow night because I have 18 patients scheduled tomorrow. So I am planning ahead of time uh, on having a hectic day. And so I am letting the lovely Dave from the uh, Wizard's Tower. Is that what you are, Dave? Are you still in here, Dave? 
Wizards. It's been a long time since you said anything, Dave. I think it's Wizards Tower, right? <laughs> yep. I can't believe it. Yes, it is. Okay, I totally just lost it. I don't know how, but yes, Wizards Tower. Um, so I'm planning on, he um, graciously switched nights with me because he usually does Wednesday night readings. Um, so I am switching with him. Uh, he's going to do his, his uh, Wednesday night readings tomorrow for me so that I could have tomorrow off because I knew tomorrow was going to be a, uh, not a bad day. I try not to do that. But it's going to be a very hectic day. So I'm going to pull one card and let the book tell us what we think of it. Ready? I've shuffled a little bit and I'm just feeling around. Uh, let me put my glasses on. Yes, we can send you calm for sure. Ready? The unknown is your friend. Lean in to embrace what's next. The unknown is your friend. Lean in, which is one of my favorite terms. Lean in. This is number 24. So let's read what the book says. The unknown is your friend. Lean in to embrace what's next. What is that feeling when you're driving away from people and they recede on the plane until you see their specks dispersing? It's the two huge world vaulting us in and it's goodbye. But we lean forward to the next crazy venture beneath the skies. Jack Kerouac. Message. Stand on the shore of what you think you know. And feel the unfamiliar enticing you forward. Up ahead, just over the horizon, there is a glimmer of foreign territory. Be filled with the spirit of adventure and inspired to let go of the familiar. Turn within and connect with what you want to carry with you. Take only that which is most essential. Only that which is most essential. That's hard for some of us, right? Let go of what is no longer needed. Even if we don't know what's needed up ahead. What do we need right now? Just take that with us. Aware that life is on your side and the unknown is your friend. Hear the calling. Muster your courage and go for it. The dream symbol. Foreign country, language, or person. If you dream of a foreign country, language, or person. Ah, so this goes into, if, if you see any of these in your dreams, this is what it means. I love it. So if you dream of a foreign country, a foreign language, or a foreign person that you don't know, you are connecting with an aspect of yourself you haven't yet encountered. When you expand your horizons and remove yourself from your day-to-day -day life to explore new terrain within yourself, you can bring back a wealth of information and perspective to benefit all. As you evolve, you may feel unfamiliar in your own skin. You are no longer who you used to be and not yet who you are becoming. So the mantra for this card and for us this week is, I am exhilarated as I leap into the wild divine. Leap into the unknown, people. Go forth. Let go of the shore. Know that we have all that we need. Keep going. Sometimes we want to stay where it's comfortable. But we can see the horizon and we know that it's coming up. It's like Yule. Remember Yule where you were talking about the sun is going to rise. We might not be able to see it, but we know it's coming. We might not quite be able to picture it in our heads, but we need to exist as if we knew we had chosen what was ahead. Keep going. Let go of the familiar. 
Try out new directions. Oh, oh, you didn't see my, my Maleficent? Okay, so Maleficent is my idol. I loved Maleficent long before Angelina Jolie was Maleficent. Maleficent has always been my favorite of all time. I have been Maleficent every Halloween for years and years and years. I can go back on my Facebook and look like I, I have mastered the costume. I have everything for years now. And this is was my husband's. You have a tattoo of Maleficent? You're kidding me. Are we twin sisters? <laughs> um, feels relevant to you in a number of ways. Good, Thomas. Yes, so my husband got me this bag, and it's like one of my favorite things. I adore this bag. Adore it. You do? I'm telling you, Steph. Are you coming in May? Yay! I love Maleficent. She is my my woman. She was my woman long before they made a movie out of her. As a matter of fact, it kind of annoyed me. Although then I really liked the movie. So I couldn't hate it, even though it was like, oh, everybody's going to like Maleficent now. And I've loved Malef Maleficent forever. And it was really hard to find Maleficent stuff like before that movie. And then all of a sudden, it was really easy. But then I loved the movie too. So nothing you can do. All right, so yes, perfect card, great card for the week. I love it. I I did too. I really loved the movie, and I and I will tell you, I promise you, I really wanted to not like it because I was upset that it was Angelina Jolie. First of all, because I thought, oh, it's going to be some like overproduced, happy-go-lucky, and they didn't do it that way. It was pretty good. The way they made it. It was kind of dark and kind of, I liked it a lot. Okay. I love you guys. I'm sorry we didn't get to tarot talk. I am just too much of a talker. And getting through all those cards took me an hour and 20 minutes. And I had a whole nother, I think she did awesome too. And I really like Angelina Jolie, but I was mad at them for making it too commercial. <laughs> I was like that with Deadpool, but I love it now, right? Deadpool was awesome. But if you were a real big fan of the comics, you were like, oh, God, they're going to make it so yucky. I had I had all kinds of stuff that I didn't talk about that I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about the, um, the whole topic that um, Russell Brand and this other guy talked about. Oh, let me quickly bring up, because I did talk about it a little bit with Hexen. I think Jez, if Jez is still in the room, she brought up something. Posting a pic in the group for you, Jen. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> she brought up something on Hexen's Live when um, all you guys are talking about the scrying mirrors and stuff. And that is awesome. Um, some people ascribe to, and I do sometimes, I will tell you. Some people um, say that you should cover... Anything that you are using to connect with another realm. So spirit, so crystal balls, scrying mirrors. That's why we don't leave planchettes on spirit boards is because it could become a gateway to spirit. Um, planchette on spirit board, that's fairly like here's the gate. Okay, so that is very, very difficult to close. So please, if you don't do any of the others, don't leave a planchette on a spirit board ever, please. Other than that, though, I find at times that I myself cover my crystal balls, cover any scrying mirrors that I have with, um, you know, a scarf or with a dark cloth. Um, and the reason is because it could become a, a gateway for spirit. <clears throat> I don't always do that. I do that uh, around Beltane. Skulls, I don't agree. Uh, skulls, to me, now this is just, again, if it works for you, right? <clears throat> um, skulls, to me, have one entity there. And it's a guardian that stays with the skull once the skull is created. It does not hop entities. So that, uh, for me, I don't have to 
to move my skulls or cover my skulls. I mean, because it's there isn't another spirit there. This That's one guardian only. And it stays one guardian. Um, but <clears throat> crystal balls, scrying mirrors, um, close to Beltane, close to Samhain. And anytime that two things, one of two things, anytime that I feel like spirit energy is raising in the house and you, it, well, hopefully you will have opened yourself up enough to know like that things are a little wonky and hmm, it does seem like things are falling down and spirit is kind of around and things are starting to disappear and that kind of thing. If that kind of thing is happening, then <clears throat> I would cover your crystal balls and your, and your scrying mirrors. Um, I would cover them around Samhain. I would cover them around Beltane. Veil is the thinnest. Um, and if my son, my youngest son, my medium son who lives here, if he starts telling me about waking up in the middle of the night and walking downstairs because he hears stuff and then it turns out to be spirit and all that, then I know spirit activity is high even if I can't feel it because he feels it. Then I will cover them also. Um, so... Uh, when I went thrifting, there was a dresser with a mirror. I didn't even know it was there. And all of a sudden I got dizzy. Then I turned around and realized because there was a mirror behind me. Absolutely. And sometimes just regular mirrors can, um, be that gateway if they're old enough, if they're vintage, if they've been used in a, a way to attract spirit that can happen with regular mirrors also. So many of our tools can attract undesirable energy. See now, okay. I... I, yes and no. That's why I don't always cover them because I do not think that a crystal ball naturally attracts uh, a maleficent. Am I just using that word because I just was talking about maleficent? That's not the word I normally use. Malevolent. Whew, thank you. Um... <laughs> malevolent i don't think thank you <laughs> i don't think that um that they naturally attract malevolent beings um i do think though that it can be an open doorway that any spirit can walk through if you do not if you're not careful enough to close that door so when you're using a scrying mirror when you're using a crystal ball if you do not cast a circle which i don't always i'll be honest if I'm in a hurry or something, I don't always cast a circle to um, use a crystal ball or a scrying mirror. Um, but I always make sure I close that door. So at the end of it, you want to thank any spirit that came through. Thank any information. Thank guardians. Thank guides. Thank whoever it is that you are talking to at the time. And then dismiss them. And shut the door behind them. And if you do not feel confident that that was really shut... Um, then it's safer to probably cover it. You don't have to. If you know that you shut the door behind them and you're not feeling any spirit energy, I often do not cover my crystal balls, scrying mirrors, that kind of thing, unless I feel that activity start to rev up. And that's just because you don't want the open door. Anything could come through. Good spirit, bad spirit, malevolent or benevolent spirit you don't want spirit that you didn't invite in the house um good luck keeping them away it'll happen anyways but you do not want um to invite that that energy in do you think newbies should be scrying absolutely and i know I, that's different for me um a lot of people do not subscribe to that but um, that is all a part of the learning process. That's all a part of um, how do you know how to open your third eye? How are, how are you going to practice your psychic abilities without practicing? You have to start somewhere. So to me, I want people to, um, to practice that. Because you know what? I should... Uh, there's a very thin line. I'm not going to say that I don't believe that anything bad can ever happen. Uh, selenite? No, I would not worry about it. I do not. I do not feel spirit energy in selenite, though. 
I don't ever use it in that way. So if you do, that might be different, Jack. Um, a lot of study Helen. She has videos for beginning new witches. I don't mess with spirit boards. Yeah, I, I did not mess with spirit boards at all until I had been taught very well. Um. So again, I, I do not teach the same things that other teach other people teach. It it depends on you. If it feels right for you, then I want you to practice. I want you to open your psychic ability. I want you to open your um psychic energy if you feel ready to do that. Um I would suggest though that you talk to someone about how to close the door. And that's the first thing that you should teach. Um if you're teaching about Connecting with spirit is how to cut that off. Okay. So I'm just saying that I don't always cover my, my crystal balls. I don't always cover my mirrors. Um, but I, um, I open myself up and I feel like I'm open enough to realize when psychic energy is going a little wonky, then I can, um, then I will cover them at that point. I do, I don't mess with spirit boards. I don't go to crossroads, better protect oneself. That's a, absolutely. And if you don't feel like you're ready for that, that's perfect. That's what I mean. You'll, hopefully you have to learn your, um, your own limitations. And if you feel comfortable with that, awesome. Last time I touched a spirit board, I was 17. It touched me back in a really bad way. Never again. And, and I certainly understand that, especially when you have people who are not very experienced around you um, in dealing with those kind of energies. Can you do a video on closing the door? I will, Sherry, absolutely. I will put that, if you would, or if someone would, put that in my list of videos to do. And um, I, because I check that at least weekly to, to think about, it, and I will try to do that very soon. I am a medium and a trans medium. Awesome. I have obes and have had many entities come around. What do you do with that kind of thing? Okay. Um, it depends. It depends on your energy. Are they bothering you? Or is that just... My son has spirit energy around him all the time. Um, he just has learned how to cut them off and say back the fuck off for the most part. Sometimes... They get annoying still. My sister jokingly tries to summon things and it freaks me out because what if she manages to attract something that could cause trouble, right? My great aunt just told me that spirit board told her when her father was going to die the exact date and it came true. Absolutely. I've, I've heard that. I've heard that before. Spirit can, spirit sees time differently than we do. I don't think time is a linear thing to spirit. They can hop around, so... That is what I do. Yep. Where is the list of to-do videos? It is uh, under files. And it says like, it's something like um, topics to do or, or something like that. <laughs> um. So I, there's spirit energy around you all the time anyways. Um, but you don't want to open the door to something different that you can't handle. So I will try to uh, do a video on that though, for sure. Very soon, like this week. Or this weekend maybe, because it's already Wednesday, huh? Maybe this weekend. I want to talk about... Um, I have needed to cover mirrors and dolls before, but never needed to cover crystal ball. And that's absolutely, again, guys, what do I say? Topics you'd like to see. Thank you. Um, if it works for you, it works. Now, as far as I'm concerned, here's the thing. What's the worst thing that could happen? You could get a hold of a really nat nasty, malevolent spirit who scares the shit out of you. Tells you something you don't want to know. Um, I, careful of what you open on the internet. 
Yes, absolutely. And and that we have talked about actually before um, is that, um, yes, have a teacher to talk you through, a mentor or a guide. Yes, 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 yes. Is that um, I will? you will never see me doing a seance online and I will never join a seance online. And I think it's really freaking stupid to think about doing a seance online because every person that is tuning in online has an open door. Yes, spirits on the internet. I have seen seances be done online, which I think is the stupidest fucking thing you could do. Because every person that is tuning in has opened a door for spirit. And there is no way, even if I was guiding some kind of seance online, I am not going to be able to go through and shut all of your doors. It's just not going to happen. There's too many open doors. So I, please don't join them. Don't look at them. No, that, that's just stupid. <laughs> that's just inviting trouble. So I want a pendulum board too. I love it. Need to close that door. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jen. There was a communication with the familiars online for a mass many. Really? Oh, well, how do you know if the entities are telling the truth? You don't. You don't. You don't always know. Sometimes now there are um, there are entities that um, you can get a hold of over and over again. Um, there are uh, like my son, who is a medium. He talks to spirit that he has known all his life. That he knows that that spirit will tell him the truth. One is his brother who passed over before he was born, but he knows these entities that have been communicating with him all his life. You don't always know that. They will lie to you. Right? What? Spirit will lie to you. If it's mischievous, hell yeah. Yeah. Even if it's a good one, they'll fuck with you sometimes. Yeah. So... If they want to just fuck with you, they will. Yes. <laughs> So there is, there is no, you and you can't know if they're telling the truth or not. There's no way for you to know, except if it comes true, then yep, they were telling the truth. If it doesn't, they lied. There's, I, I don't, yeah, absolutely. I don't know what else to tell you. You just have to take everything that they say with a grain of salt. If you, like if my grandmother comes through, she's not going to lie to me. I know that. Um, she may tell me what she believes to be true though. And it's not necessarily the way we see it here on this plane. Because, again, time is not linear for them. So it's not like they are saying next week, because that is not a linear thing. They can jump to whatever time they feel like. So, okay. I, I know we could go on this topic forever, and I'm sorry to cut everybody off. Um, but just be careful if you start to feel like something is is not right, then cover things up, then shut doors, then do what you can to do that. Um, if you don't know how, look up some ways how. I, I mean, you can you can always take salt. Salt is is a barrier. So you can always take salt and, Put salt in your doorways, put salt in your windows, and banish whatever is there. I don't like to go that route because I don't mind spirit in my house. I just don't want a whole lot of annoying mischievous spirit. But, you know, they're here too sometimes. You just kind of learn to live with them just like you do, you know, the dog that poops on your rug. <laughs> so, that's all I can tell you guys. I just am not worried about... Um, Stay away from spare work unless you know what you're doing. When I was a ghost hunting time, and again, I was called because someone opened a door they couldn't close. Yes, I've had that too. Like I said, I have all my equipment here and stuff. Maybe that's one of the things we'll do in May is, is do, I've got all these ideas All the, for tarot stock. We'll have to like maybe do a ghost hunting thing or something. Okay. Uh, also do a video on knowing... To spirit guide versus a nine guide spirit messaging with you. Oh, 
Yeah, that's a little tricky sometimes. I don't always know either. Joey's pretty good at it, but, you know, he he was born with that. So, all right. I love you guys. We'll talk soon, I promise, just not tomorrow. So, yeah, I believe it. Angels abusing them because they weren't really angels. Mm-hmm. I love you guys. <laughs> Blessings. Have a good night.